you get to do things that you, you really feel are taking advantage of your abilities. So uh, with that being said, one of the things that you can do is do a lot of research. Uh, look, there's a lot of great uh, web references. Um, if I could make a little plug for my storyboard group, I do a San Francisco Professional Storyboard Group. Join professional uh, organizations that are going to, uh, one, help you network, and two, help give you the skills that you can use to market yourself as a storyboard artist. Uh, so ASIFA, that's a good one. If you guys don't know ASIFA, it's the Animation Society in Hollywood. There's also a branch here in San Francisco, and I think there's one in New York. Uh, all very good ones to join. I think the biggest one is in Hollywood. I re highly recommend you guys do that because they have a lot of good networking events and really it pays for itself in the fact that those are the people who vote for the Annie Awards and you really get screening copies and invitations to screenings from the big studios. So it's a really good uh, networking type of thing. Uh, also uh, some books I can recommend is uh, Story by Robert McKee. Let me go to my... So the other thing I can, I can say as well is keep at it. You know, you're going to get discouraged. I have a pile when I do my little uh, meetings. I bring a pile of rejection letters that I've collected over the years. All right, I've got, I got them from all the studios. I got live action, commercials, I got Pixar, I got Lucasfilm, I've got DreamWorks. They all rejected me, right? They hate me. It's like you can't, you can't get discouraged by this kind of stuff. They send you these annoying little postcards saying, oh, we have your, your portfolio. Thank you for applying, but we really can't use you right now, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I really kept that over the years, especially you know after I started getting more and more established. Partly because it's it's a long road to fall and to remind me of you know to, to stay humble, to keep working hard, and uh, to you know really to keep at it, keep the passion alive. But it it really stems from a passion to do the best job you can. I mean, I, you realize that w your work is going to be seen by a lot of people. You know, sometimes if it's a, a feature or even a TV show, we have a really wide audience. Probably millions of people are seeing this stuff out there. So you really have to do the best job you can. Now, you fight the good fight because sometimes you can't win all the battles and some, sometimes, you know, the production has to make compromises because of budget and time and all these things. But it's difficult to, to get the work done, but I find it's so rewarding once you do something that, uh, you know, you put your blood, sweat, and tears in, and you can say to yourself, that was the best that I could do with the time I had. So you have no regrets going forward. That was, that was, you give it your all. And I tell you, you learn more that way, and you progress further that way if you really push yourself. The other thing, of course, is to be in an environment where people are supporting, uh, where the standards of quality are high, and people are supporting that kind of contribution, in the sense that they appreciate your work. They allow you to the freedom uh, to do the best work you can. So, th and that's not always easy to find. And uh, like I said, you got to keep at it. You really have to keep the passion alive through y your own personal desire to tell the stories that you want. If I can remember what I felt like when I was leaving school, was this O overwhelming feeling, this burden. You got you got bills to pay. Your girlfriend left you. You have no money. You have no job. What are you gonna do, right? All this kind of stuff is, you know, coming down on you. You it it does get easier. You gotta fight the good fight. Keep up the passion. Keep up the hard work. It's the continuous learning throughout your life that is gonna get you to where you want. <coughs> excuse me, to get you to where you want to be. Really, everything I know as a professional is because somebody told it to me. Somebody has taught me this. There was a real struggle for me at the beginning of my career to learn the types of techniques that I know now and a lot of the principles that I kind of quickly went over today uh, was because somebody sat down and told it to me. So it's important that uh, you keep up that investigation, the constant learning, uh, learning about composition, anatomy, uh, film language, uh, you know, dynamic cutting, all those things. Keep that fresh in your mind because uh, you can always learn something new and learn from anyone and everyone. I have a, a question here that I ask, well, what was the best experience in uh, so far in my career and what was the worst experience? And I was pondering that because, well, the best experience to me was one, the satisfaction of knowing that I was doing 
what I always wanted to do. Like I said, I, I carried this passion and it comes from way back when when I was a kid, I always liked to draw. You know, I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this kind of stuff when you're watching movies and, uh, and you know, you want to do your art and express yourself that way. I always wanted to do this. So one of the best experiences was actually doing it, actually having a job, doing what I did. I got paid your peanuts I was doing the it was the most horrible production I won't mention what it was it was the worst job possible but I can't tell you how overjoyed I was to go to work every day because I was actually doing something that I enjoyed something that I was into and man it sure beats bean counting or engineering or architecture or any other junk that I wasn't interested in what I can say with you if I can leave you with some words of inspiration is by God keep at it you guys will get there